Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Don't yell into the microphone. You just overmodulated. Ten thirty. Mm-hmm. I'll be here until midnight. Not She'll me. only be here till ten thirty. Actually, twenty-four minutes from now. Twenty-four minutes from right now. Actually, you're bigger than I am tonight. Want me to roll back? Uh, no, don't. No, if you roll back, yeah, but then, then they can't hear you. So what? They, they can't hear what you. What did you say? They can't hear you. Ah, I'll uh, roll up. Yeah, but if I do the split screen, uh, uh, well, we're fine. We'll be okay. Sit, sit up. Huh? Yeah, there sit you up. Go. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know. It's warm in here, and yet there's cool coming it's out coming, of the air conditioning. It's coming. It it is. Yeah, if you put your hand up there, it's cool. Yeah. Would you go over to the louvers over there and just point them a little I bit did. down directly? No, they should us. go up, because, and then the fan brings everything down. Oh, really? Yeah, they should face up. Oh boy, I think when it gets about five inches away from the thing, and it's pretty cool out there tonight, so I don't know. I give up on the, and I don't want to get another air conditioner. Here's the reason why. Let me explain why I don't want to. Let me turn up the Alex, air. Alex, bo- please volume. explain why we can't have another air conditioner. I can't get enough because the only ones please. they have at Costco are 8,000 BTU, and this is 5,000. I'm worried that an 8,000 would blow the fuse. Probably blow the apartment. Yeah, although I can run that one and the one in the other rooms. So I don't know. Maybe I can probably get an 8,000. Get an fine. electrician and ask them. Uh, yeah, you right. You know how much electricians charge? Just to ask. Just to ask, an electrician will charge you a fortune. You're not telling them that you're giving them the job. You just want to know well, what... Why do you always play around with my wires? Because everything's sitting right here. Yeah, that's right. You know why? Because I work right here. Well, you're grouchy. Yeah, I'm grouchy, God damn it! You're watching that fucking aristocrat? It's over. It's all over? Yeah. The whole series? Yep. Gone? Yep. Dead? Ended at the Irish Rebellion. First, she said she was watching the Aristocrats, and I thought it was the Penn Jillette film. I saw that many times. Yeah, and then uh, then I thought it was maybe uh, uh, a uh, live version of a Disney film, the Aristocats. <laughs> but no, it was the Aristocrats. <laughs> this is about the Aristocrats. Yeah, so. it's good. I, I don't know either that or some some machine is hotter than it's been in a long. Time. Well, all of this. It's heat. I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. all of it. I'm, I'm trying to think, what could I turn off here? And I need everything that's going. Just stuff that you could put to sleep at, you know. I could turn yours off. Put it to sleep. Well, well no, but that doesn't necessarily cool it down. I don't know. I, I give up. I got to tell you something. Uh, I solved a major problem. Which problem is that, Alex? Please See, tell us. What happens is all the people who do shows on GabNet, have to come to a machine here and get on the machine and deposit their load, <laughs> uh, deposit their show, and then they have to place it in the schedule. All right? And that we use the thing called Log Me In. Now, when I first got Log Me In, I figured we needed some way that these people could could get d- there. Get get there. So Log Me In was the answer. I had one account, and they used my account. And log me in cost, I think when I bought it, I think it was $99. And the next year it went up to 150 Okay, well, I understand. They sucker you in for the first year and then they ch- charge you more for the next year. Then, the next year, it goes up to $250. And I get a thing the other day that says, we're raising the rate on your next renewal, which is next month, to $350. I think I'd rather hear you talk about your wait ailments. Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I call these people. I write them, <laughs> first, I write these people. Help me. 
and they tell me why are you leaving? Well, what I had to do is I decided I had to find another way for them to be able to do this. And I found this thing called Remote PC that does everything Log Me In does, uh, and uh, it is considerably cheaper. How much cheaper? For the first year, it's six dollars and ninety-five cents for the year. And then it goes up to sixty nine ninety five after the first year. I don't know. I wouldn't give Log Me Up up so quickly. No, no. Check I'm, it out. No. Test I, it for a while. I have tested this. It is as good, if not better, than Log Me In, at least for Can what we do. Can our challenge broadcaster use it? That's the question. We can't, uh, you know something? What? You're talking about Jack, aren't yes. you? You're, you're dissing our... I'm our, not dissing. Our, our, we, we, our, we mid, all, our midnight mail. We all know he's challenged. Our, uh, he's computer challenged. Right. But, but this is so good that I, on, on Log Me In, I could only have two machines that it could look at, right? This one allows me to have up to 10, and each one has to have its individual password. You could actually go to his computer then. Wait a minute. So I could have him install this thing, and installing it is, is not the hard part for him. You have to walk him through no, it. No, but what I'm saying is, then he simply says, okay, make this one of the machines. I can go on his machine and set everything right, up Right, and that's what you should do. Yeah, but it, it, it's so simple that you know you can you can do it you could do it I, I just told you I'll tell you Monday what to do and, and it's so simple it's amazing plus you can see both screens if you have two screens on a computer and things like that it's really good and it's only six dollars and ninety five cents you compare that to three hundred and fifty dollars and I think maybe I'm saving a little bit of money ah but anyway so I talked to them here's the gall of a company and I asked them uh, a, a woman writes me and says, you know, we'd like to keep you as a customer. Why are you leaving? And I said, because I found a, uh, a, a cheaper way of doing this. And, and she said, who? I said, I'm using remote PC. It's costing me $6.95 for the first year. If you can beat that price. <laughs> and and uh, she wrote back and said, we can give you, we'll give you a special $250. We're still a big difference between sixty nine dollars, six, six, even the, if next year it's sixty nine ninety five, and two hundred and fifty dollars, and it does all the same things and is I think less uh, uh, so far it has less problems with it. So uh, I, you know I I just I I I'm very happy with what I did. Oh and then oh then then. Oh. Then I I, uh, I want to make sure I'm. Then they send me a thing. They say, "Well, your 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 renewal is going to automatically renew." Now I never signed up for automatically renewal, but they send you a letter saying we're just going to assume that if you don't stop it, right, you're going to want to renew. That's the way Consumer Reports is with me. Oh, it's really? Like automatically? Yeah, yeah. You never signed a thing. It just auto happens. It will automatically renew, and then if you want to automatically renew, you can't just go onto this site and go, "Take me off. I want to end. Disable my account." You have to call them, <laughs> of course, and the call takes forever. And you get some automated person in, um, yeah, Philippines. And the guy says, "What can we do to keep you?" And I said. Not unless you come up with six ninety five a year for the first year, are you going to get me? And he said, "Well, you know, we have problems here. We just got we just got bought up by another company, and they need to make more of a profit. So that's why the prices are going up." And I'm going, "It's not my problem. My problem is coming up with the three hundred and fifty bucks on a fixed fucking income. All right." Uh, the nerve of these guys. Didn't they come back with you with a deal? Yeah, $250. <laughs> right. We're still a little bit away from even the high price that it'll cost me <laughs> next year of sixty nine ninety five. Well, you know why? Because Log Me In at one time was the only thing on the block, and now it's got a lot well, of There's another one called Team Viewer that charges more than they do. Wow. Probably for companies. They seem to think, they, uh, they, they seem to think that they... Uh, 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 they have some kind of market that uh, and one of these letters they sent me said, well, we're only meeting the market price of what this kind of a product costs. No, what this kind of a product costs is $6.95 for the first year. 
okay? And I'm sure at that, the company that sold it to me, remote PC, go get it, remote PC, I've got all my machines, every one of my machines I can, I can get to from my iPad. There's an app, and it's so fucking easy. I showed you, it's ridiculous, you know? So I can get I can get onto all of them and so on and you know I have one little problem tonight I couldn't figure out but then I rebooted a machine and it was fine, uh, not the machine it was trying to go to but you know, and and these guys who oh, who who bought uh, um, what nothing I'm just listening. Wait, a these guys who bought log me in own another company called Go to PC. Have you heard of go yeah. go to PC? Oh, that's go to been my around PC. for years. Yeah, yeah. They were they're that company. They're the ones that bought it, and I guess they just felt, oh, we've underpriced ourselves. People, we've got these people hooked on this. <laughs> no, you haven't got them hooked. All they have to do is go online and say, okay, remote desktop programs. Listen, I could even do it cheaper because uh, Google Chrome, you can make your Google Chrome go to desktops, but it was a little more complicated. And I want something simple for Jack. Jack, are you listening? <laughs> Listen, this is so simple. Um, uh, 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 you could do it. Jack, you can do it. Did well, you look, hear well, this? Look, look, you know, talk about challenge. I can't get my Bluetooth earphones to work. Well, they didn't work. Well, because you didn't turn them on. Well, the blue light went on. And you didn't pair it with your phone. Which my, on my phone said on for Bluetooth. Yes, but you didn't pair the earphones with it. What do you it. mean pair? You simply go to the Bluetooth on your iPhone. Right. And you go to Bluetooth, and it says there, like, uh, one of the things you'll have there is uh, your uh, Apple Watch. I've never heard it talk to me, ever. A Apple Watch. we never heard what talk to you? The Bluetooth. When you when you press down on the button and you hold it. Oh, you hold it. Yes. Then it says Bluetooth is activated or on or whatever. And then the next thing it says is you're uh, you're you're hooked up to uh, your uh, phone. Whatever you're hooked up to whatever. Uh, but what you didn't do is you didn't go in, go to Bluetooth, and then wait for the thing which is Q30 to come up. And then Q30. Pair. I'm listening. I'm not looking at anything. Well, it's paired now, so now you should be able to use it. But when you say when Q30 but comes when up, what am I supposed to be looking at? Look, I'll show you. Right oh, here. I'm looking at my phone. You You're didn't say at, that I'm looking at my am, phone. Am I not explaining this right? See, what happens is you go to Bluetooth. See, folks, Bluetooth, uh, and, and and you go to Bluetooth, and it's Turn on. It on, and then see. There, there's Apple Watch, and what's below it? I don't have my glasses on. What does it say below it? What does it say below it? I can't see my what glasses. What does it say below it? Let me get my glasses. Alex, Alex is Apple Watch and Q30. Uh -huh. What's Q30? The Q30 is your Bluetooth earphones. Oh. And you just click on that to make sure they're connected. Well, you never told me that. I was just doing it okay, through the well, earphones. Okay, well... You know, what would you do if I were not here? If you were not here, I'd go back to basic cable. Let's I swear I would go back to basic cable. That's it. Really? Yeah. You're that? that challenge. Well, you've, I've become challenged since I've no, met you. No, you become lazy. No, I've given no. that job Alex, to you. Alex, the TV, the sound doesn't work. <laughs> All of a sudden, the sound went out. Eight billion fucking times, folks. I have told this woman, when the sound goes out, <laughs> It's a little something with that television set. Just turn it off and turn it back on, and the sound will be there. It did come back. Yeah, yeah. but you don't remember to do that. No, you have to come into the bedroom <laughs> in the other room where I'm doing something. Where he's playing a game. Where I'm jerking off or something. Or something. something. And uh, you have to ask, Alex, I don't get the sound. I'm not going to do it ever again. Next time you don't get sound, you're going to have to figure it out. Oh, Okay. I'll remember that one. What do you mean? I'll remember it. And by the way, you know what else she won't do? And, and, and it, it bothers me. Here it goes. You don't eat anything I make. I, that's not true. Well, I, I eat your uh, heart. <laughs> <laughs> you eat my heart. Yeah. What was that? 
<laughs> Are you wetting your pants now? I she has a little leakage <laughs> problem when she laughs. Oh, getting old sucks. Huh? Getting old sucks. Are you, are you leaking? No, I'm not leaking. Oh, okay. Well, you will be. <laughs> he does make me laugh. No, wait a minute. What did you, now what were you laughing about? Said, did oh, you oh, you make it hot no. dogs? <laughs> you, those hot dogs that we make when it's, it's a night we don't feel like actually cooking. But I've come up now with a, a chicken uh, a marsala, which is very good. You had some a little bit tonight. You have to admit it tastes good. It tasted good. okay. What do you mean okay? It was okay. It was yummy. I'm not big on white meat. You're not big on white meat. Yeah. Anyway. Make thighs the next time. I know. I don't make thighs. <laughs> <laughs> You'll eat what I make. I mean, you know, if you make a dinner. Do, do, do I, I suddenly make a make, dinner? Wait, wait, when, you make a dinner and we have guests over. You make a dinner and you make something. Do I go, well, I'm sorry, I don't want any. Oh, how many times have I had to make you a little salad while we all ate a dinner? Well, no, no, no. Oh, that, oh, oh, oh. that was when I was on the diet. And you had, you know, I had to stick to that, you know. But I still, there was always something that you made that I, 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 I dealt with, you know. But I mean, you, you just don't eat. When I make food, it's not good enough. I didn't say it wasn't good enough. I have to be a pretty damn good cook. I ate before. Do I not make a great beef bourguignon? I think your chicken breasts were better than the beef bourguignon. No, no they weren't. Yes, it was. The beef bourguignon was delicious. It tasted just like up at the restaurant we always go to where I get the beef bourguignon. You know what the problem is? You don't taste your stuff. I taste no, it. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You don't correct it. I don't need to correct it. It's oh, perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> and unlike you, unlike you, who is, you know, well, it's a little too salty, so I better add more water. Before you know it, what was a small <laughs> bowl of soup she was making turns into an army size. You should see the kettle she's got in there. It's true. I, I was a chef in an army in a previous life. Yeah, I mean, she's, I was. Got, she's literally, a, you could, he, she cooks for an army. No, and then you for the rest the of the week, all her friends have to put up with her cooking because she's bringing these little, she actually went out and bought those plastic, you know, things that restaurants would get for the takeout. The delis, the delis. For takeout. <laughs> she bought a whole bunch of those so that when she makes this stuff, she can make those things up and take them to work with her and say, to somebody here, here, and they go home and they it's, go. It's she, true. I, she made some more fucking food. It's true. And the reason why the pots are so big is if you're making stock, you have to cook it down. And then you go to a smaller pot and a smaller pot and a smaller you pot. You don't go to a smaller pot. I do then go what to do, a smaller Why do we wind up with a pot like this? No, it goes smaller and smaller. No, it doesn't go it smaller. Does. It like goes smaller and smaller as we eat it. <laughs> well, that's what it's for. So anyway. Do I have to cook when, when, when our guests come up? <laughs> I'm <to> stop cooking. <laughs> Since you went on your diet, I kind of stopped cooking. I'll make my chili. You won't eat it anyway. So Monday I go to the doctor. And it's 1024. And Tuesday and Wednesday I'm having a telephone conversation with my doctor. So there. Oh, good. And then next weekend you're gone? It's Girls Weekend in Burlington, Vermont. Wow. Yeah, I got the whole weekend. You're flying up there and everything? Yeah. I thought you were going to drive. No, you're going to drive when we go up in September, hmm. if you still remember. If I remember how to drive. I know. I, it's been so long since I've driven. Tell me about that it. That I wonder if I remember how to well, drive. Well, that's the way I feel. When I when I used to go up to storage and Carlos would be driving the truck and I'm driving the car yeah. like this. Well, it was like, uh, uh, it was about two years ago I drove up to Burlington, wasn't it? It was more than that. Two or three. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure I still know how to I'm drive. sure you do, too. Better you than me, though. I mean... But what we're going to do is we're going to... We, go up the before, coast. Before, we, we go up there for, like, about three days. Yeah. And I rent a car for three days, and it's, like, 750 bucks. And I'm going, that, that you know, that's a lot of money to spend on a car. You know, especially when you're on a, on a fixed income like I am, okay? You think about these things. So then I checked to see how much it would cost to rent for a week, and it's like three fifty. And we went, why don't we just do it for a week, and then we can, after we leave go our friends, no, go no, see no. some other people. We'll go start seeing the other people, because they're going to see us on the weekend. So yeah. we'll go up the coast and visit 
Yeah. Our friends in Maine, and then go over to Vermont. Oh, and then go over. Then go over to Vermont. Okay. Well, yeah. well, whatever, you know. Anyway, that's what we're thinking. That's what we're thinking. Now, does that a mean I have, is, is Suppose I get the car back a day early. They Keep don't it on the street. Well, if they, if they say they're going to, I'll tell them to charge me for the full week. Right, you know? yeah. And if they say they won't, I'll go park it on the street. <laughs> park it in front of the lot. <laughs> huh? Park it in front of the lot. I'll park it right in front of her. You know? right. And then when they say, are you bringing, when are you bringing your car back? I said, look outside your front door. <laughs> you know? There it is. Okay. It's 828. Can I roll over? No. I'm rolling over. No, no, over. not, not yet. I'm not rolling. yet. It's not 828. Uh, it is. It's 82730. Eight. It's 828 on this on this computer. Um, so anyway, that that was my adventures with the log me in. Isn't that exciting? That's it's better than listening to your well, ailments. I just saw, you know, uh, somebody said this yesterday. I think it was, I think maybe it was on Jack's show. And it's true that companies uh, on the internet, the first year you buy anything, they give it to you. Yeah. And then the second year, the price goes like this. Well, it's, it's like buying a printer. The printers are cheap. It's the toners that are so expensive. Well, that, that's always been the case. But yeah, I'm, but it's like... Well, we're talking about when they try to sell you something online. Yeah. And by the way, you know what the newest thing is? 20% off. They all have 20 Everything is 20 Go to Bed Bath & Beyond... I, I, Phil called me. Said and to free me, delivery. Phil said to me once, he said, hey, listen, I got this thing in the mail. I'll send it to you. You can get 20% off at Bed Bath & Beyond. It turns out that if you simply, like, uh, go belch online. at Be Bed Bath & Beyond, they'll give you 20% off. Uh, and who was the latest that was 20% off? I think it's Amazon and Whole Foods. It's all. You know, 20% off, 20% off. <laughs> You know. you know what I've noticed is um, Amazon in New York City does their own delivery now. Mm -hmm. And UPS, you know, I used to see the UPS. Well, guy I, know, I still I'm like I'm on Amazon today. It came by, uh, by UPS. Right, but for the most part, like in our office, it's an Amazon person that comes. By the way, I just quickly, I got I I spent twenty five bucks on a copy of Oklahoma, the musical they made a movie out of in the fifties. What are you doing? I'm just looking. Would you pay attention to me? I'm listening. <laughs> um, uh, they in, in the 1950s they made uh, the, mu the musical Oklahoma. Oklahoma, where the winds come. And they did it in a process home. called Todd A.O. But they because, Named after because Michael not Todd. because not every theater could have Todd A.O. They also filmed it simultaneously in CinemaScope. The difference being that they're two different takes. They didn't put cameras side by side and then shoot the shot. They sh they did it twice. With they, the yes. So they shot. So the the, if, if, if people have said for years that if you could get a Todd A.O. version of it, everybody's performance is fresher it's because fresh. the second take or the third take or when they finally get down uh, down to the Cinemascope take, it was horrible. Well, I went and I got this thing because I wanted to see this Todd A.O. Print. He did other things besides yeah. Oklahoma. Todd A.O. was done, at, films are done at 24 frames per second. Todd A.O. was 30 frames per second, okay? And the screen was huge. Hold, hold on. I'm listening. But, uh, let me finish my story and then when you can come <laughs> over and get back there. Anyway, uh, so uh, what was I going to say now? I, I have know. no idea. Oh, uh, Todd A.O. So the, the, Named I, after I, Michael Todd. I got the film today. Yes. And I figured, ah, you know, I spent 25 bucks so I could just have the Tade over. This Tade O is, it, print is the best rendition of a film I have ever seen on Blu ray. I mean, you saw it. It is stunning. The definition is incredible. The, the movement is smooth. And then I went over and I looked at the Cinemascope copy. It's grainy. <laughs> it's, a 20, it's a 24 frames. It's a really. Just if you have a chance, get or see the a, a Todd A.O. version of Oklahoma. Okay, here she comes. She's sneaking over. Why don't you just stay right there and then you can have a split personality? Uh, let me uh, let me just get rid of this stuff here, and uh, I guess I'll just uh, go. Uh, I guess I'll just go to my uh, my. There we go. Are you happy now? Yes. Okay, now let me go get the uh, 
Skype going here. here here's Skype, and I will, Skype turn, I will turn the Skype on. Now it, it, now it is available. And by the way, you're not going to hear the fan as much anymore now because I don't have that mic on. Ah, that's what it was. Yeah. 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 So. I'm going to share the mic. No, not really. <laughs> I'm going to bed. What? Well, mm, you're going to go to bed? Uh, we're waiting for people now to call. Please. Huh? Please call. Please call. She's begging you folks. Um, so anyway. Um, oh, and also, here's the other thing. Can I bring this one up? Absolutely. My other gripe with you? Oh. So we get these new phones, right? And they're the, the uh, iPhone X. And, and the iPhone X and all the latest Apple, they took away the uh, headphone Button. jack. All right? So you have to do it through this jack. Now, if you've got a pair of the older earphones with a mini jack, they give you a little thing like this. <laughs> Oh, there's Kevin. Hold on a second. Kevin. Uh, they give you a little thing like this in order for you okay. to uh, uh, hook your phone into your earphones. And she says, I don't have one of those. And I said, well, it's in the box the phone came in. It's less than a week since we got the phones. And guess what? She threw the box out. And so we don't have the earphone jack. So, Hi, Kevin. So she doesn't have it. There's Kevin, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Kevin. Good evening. Oh, there and here comes here comes uh, uh, the. I was calling you first because your your microphone that fan was really screwing your your audio up. What? That that fan was really screwing up your audio. I could barely we could barely hear you. I was I was were you yelling at you on the chat there? Oh really? Oh really? See, calling I, you to, it sounded like do... you were in another room in Marjorie's. Oh. Mike was pretty loud. Oh, really? I mean, it was louder than but yours I was. You the next time we should yeah. do the whole thing here. Uh, no. Yes. No. Yes. No. You should be sitting on Marjorie's lap. That's what should be. Or, or vice versa. Wait a minute. Go over there for just one second. No. Go over there for one second. I just want to test it. Oh, Maybe yeah. I had the mic up too loud. Sound check. Or, or it's blowing on the mic or okay. something. That's talk, what it sounded talk, like. Talk blowing the, on the how mic. How do I sound now? How does it sound? Better? How does it sound now? You yeah. can hear the rumble. Yeah. yeah. There's a rumble it's yeah. not as bad as it was earlier because you probably, pulled the mic closer to you. I might have had her mic up too high. You did have it up high. It All could right. be because we could hear her better, but there was a definite rumble and we could barely hear well, you. Uh, I thought you was off. If you people out there in the audience uh, were Where'd bothered by that. I don't know. If, <laughs> Phil, I think Phil had his heart attack. No. Uh -oh. uh, <coughs> Here he is. There he is. He's oh. still standing. Phil's He's lying. alive up tonight. Huh, what? He's alive. What, well, yeah. not entirely. Uh, Phil, as we all know, had a uh, stent put in his uh, artery? heart artery. Yeah, in your heart or whatever. Yeah, the uh, aorta. Uh, the age one. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, you could translate this. Um, I, I was um, texting a buddy of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, when the doctor was telling me what the problem was. One of them is the Widowmaker, which is the, um, let me see what that's called, the L. Uh, well, there's one that starts with an R, and there's one that starts with an L. They use acronyms for everything. Wait a minute. Do you have the Widowmaker? Uh, that's the one that's 100% clogged. Oh, my God. Is the Widowmaker. That's, yeah. why, that's why they call it the Widowmaker. Hi, Rob. Welcome Hi, Rob. to another edition of Alex's Waiting Room. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? That's why they call it the Widowmaker. Y yeah. 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 So, um, uh, anyway, there was one uh, artery. Uh, uh, I believe it was in the front. Uh, that one, they were, it was 70% blocked, and they put a stint in it. A stint. Stent. A stent well, is something you do in the army. Yeah, do a stent. Yeah. Uh, and then this other one, uh, I guess, was 100% clogged. So they couldn't get the dye past it, and they don't know if there's another clog beyond it. So what they have to do is uh, a much more advanced machine where they uh, put a camera up one artery with the dye, mm -hmm. and then the other artery is the working artery, and it's called a staged stent uh, placement. Mm -hmm. And they, they, uh, they'll put a stent in, put more dye in, so they can get past 
the next blockage. If it's not 100 percent, then uh, what that allows them to do is to see what's going on. Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let, for a second, let's, let's, let's try and analyze whether you have a heart problem or not, okay? And we'll just do it with a simple test. Boo! <laughs> you just killed everybody. <laughs> they give you a take-home defibrillator. <laughs> yeah, it's called my Kaiser card. <laughs> yeah. So, so do they figure they figure you will live until they get the rest of this done? Well, if if I don't, then I've already paid my uh, my monthly uh, subscription. So uh, yeah, there'll be there'll be dollars ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, you know, I uh, meant to ask you. If we kill how, him by Tuesday, he'll be ahead of the game. Yeah, right. Uh, how was your uh, deal at the uh, at the foot doctor or or the? Oh, uh, I'm going to the foot doctor on uh, Monday. The neurologist. The neurologist. Neurologist. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's Monday. Yeah. Sister over here uh, says to me, uh, "So uh, don't you go to a neurologist already?" And I said, "No, that's a urologist." Mm -hmm. And then I began to realize that the difference between a neurologist and a urologist is an N. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cook with the wrong guy? <laughs> you no, know, no, I have I have a urologist already. Who, who you uh, like? Well, I like him. He's better than the rest. A urologist, by and large, are horrible, miserable human beings. But you know, well, they, they they says MD after their name. Maybe you can look it's, at your it foot. It stands for me, doctor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, me too. Probably another hundred bucks a visit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh well. No, this guy. You know, the, the urologist. What he does? He's got his little magic wand. I oh, call yeah. it the magic wand. And a smile. It, it's a magic. <laughs> it's a magic wand for him. He's got two of them. He's got one. He does a sonogram of my renal system. That's yeah. every other visit, and then every other visit he sticks a sonogram up my a sonos whatever up my ass right well it's better than yeah. a finger right well no, he doesn't <laughs> he's never shoved a finger up my ass and i'm thinking to myself well i could complain about that because you know he is after all a urologist and that's part of the job is sticking his finger up your ass but if i were a urologist and i could find any other way of getting the information i need besides sticking my finger up somebody's ass i think i'm going to do it the thing that he sticks up there the probe uh, does it vibrate and is it about that long and black? <laughs> With that, I'm saying good night. Good night, dear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you mean the anaconda of death uh, dildo? Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, Rob? We haven't heard from you in about a week or two or week and a half or so. How you been? I'm busy, busy. Busy, busy. Yeah. Why? Why busy? What's busy? Well, busy, and then you know, comes this time of night. If it, you know, I'm exhausted. Really? Turn your, turn your. Don't have any energy to. Turn your mic to, down a little bit. It's it's over modulating a bit. It's, yeah. it's, I'm not going to turn it down on the board. I'm going to see if I can. Mm -hmm. Or back oh. off a little. What the hell. Yeah, it's just it is over mod. Doesn't it sound to guys like he's over modulating a bit? Just a bit, you know. It, it it's very bright. Yes. Maybe the gain's too high. Wait a minute. He, now he just signed off completely. Oh, there here he comes back again. Anyway, so, so you've been well, just back off the mic a bit, you know. So you so you've been um, uh, you've been working hard is what it is, and you've been too exhausted to call. You know, I forget that you're on the same time zone I am. You know, Phil has no excuse. It's, you know, it's 7 o'clock at night out there, 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm actually same. surprised I have the the strength today because I was in, I was out of town last night. I was out in, down in Virginia Beach, and I woke up at like 5.30 this morning and drove back. So four and a half hours, I was back here by 11 o'clock this morning. Really? Yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm surprised that I actually feel good tonight. Well, we're glad you could do it. We. I don't know what it is lately, as I, I feel like I'm tired more than usual. Are you? Still and I, you know, it's too. Even if I'm awake. Yeah. I feel like you know, I just, I can't, 
I don't have anything to say. <laughs> I'm just exhausted. Uh, yeah, I know, I, I, and I understand. But now my question is, um, um, uh, are you still on the diet? Um, no, I'm in maintenance mode right now for, for the summer because I wanted to be able to enjoy food. So I'm staying at the weight that I hit when I got off of it in the middle of early part of April. Yeah, okay. So I've been successful with that after Labor Day, or actually Labor Day weekend yeah. will start the second half. I'm trying to figure out with my diet, uh, what point is the, uh, it, what are you back I'm just, for? just getting a cable. You're just getting a cable. Oh, sure, just come on in. We're doing a professional program here. Just come get your goddamn fucking cable. Uh, um, uh, you know, I, I just wonder at what part of the maintenance diet, part of the diet, you can start eating hot fudge sundaes that's what i'm wondering you could ha i i eat stuff all the time like that but i you know then the next day or i go may go two days i went on vacation for a week and i had a great time i gained like three pounds and lost it within a week yeah well you know i my, my problem is i find that i go up and i go down i'm always within a certain range you know but it, it drives me crazy because I would like to lose a little more. So I put myself on the diet and I can't lose. You know, I'm just, I'm, and part, I, part of it is I'm working out every day too. You yeah, know? you probably days, gain some muscle. Yeah. My days of dieting uh, and eating uh, things that I shouldn't eat uh, have changed drastically. I'm going to learn to like fish, chicken, and salad. And uh, too much fish, hmm? you eat too much fish, you're going to wind up with problems as well. Well, it depends on the kind of fish you eat. I don't care what kind of fish you eat. You got to be careful of the mercury content in fish. Yeah. So. Uh, does mercury clog well, your arteries? You know something. There was, oh, a, there, was a, 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 there was a song years ago, and I'm trying to remember. Joe Jackson. Remember Joe Jackson, the artist Joe Jackson. Yeah. He sure. had a song called "Everything Gives You Cancer." <laughs> <laughs> and it was like you know, it's just like no matter what you do, everything gives you cancer. And um, um, do you know they just found out now? And this is a, a true, uh, absolutely true medical study, not some half-assed uh, thing somebody came up with. Four cups of coffee a day will help save your heart. I've been drinking five cups of coffee a day. That's the, probably the problem. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, but four cups of coffee a day is good for your heart. Oh, there's, uh, yeah, have you, this have you heard this? They'll change it next week. They always... Oops. What happened to Kevin right in the middle of talking to us? <laughs> Uh, 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 Jeff, have you have you, have you heard have you heard this about coffee? Uh, well, it, Bob, just the story that I get is no coffee for you. Really Every week it's yeah. something. I've been, you know, off coffee. I've, guys that eat butter and drink red wine don't have any coronary artery disease. Guys that that eat red wine and butter they have coronary artery. You know, I guess you got to be French. They well, say my, it's sugar because they don't have high sugar content in their diet. They have a high fat content. Yeah. They're saying sugar is the big, um, the big enemy of all of us. Uh, yeah. The sugar is the big enemy. I mean, and that's what I've stayed away from since I went on the low carb diet. I don't. I really. I, sugar from everything. Uh, uh, well, no. I I am very careful not to take in sugars. You know, I look on the back of boxes and everything. Right. And uh, refined sugar. There's going to be natural sugar and stuff, you know, but it's the refined sugar. The white sugar is just not good for you. Yeah. Uh, Did I just disappear uh, there or what? What? Did yeah, I yeah you, just, you just went away. You just disappeared in the middle of a sentence. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. Yeah. Okay. With your name on it. Hmm. Now, what were you saying, Kevin? I was just saying that the, they changed that coffee thing left and right. One second it's going to kill you the next second it's good for you yeah yeah when they say five cups a day do they tell you what size cups it's uh, the vente at uh, starbucks yeah, it's, <laughs> it's probably a five ounce cup uh, yeah well then lots of sugar right espresso <laughs> and pour some water in it they call it the cafe americano well, let's see. Instead of sugar and coffee, I use stevia, which is kind of a form of sugar, but it's non-metabolous. It doesn't metabolize in your system. 
Yeah. Uh, the problem I, with that, though, is my, all of the artificial sweeteners, while like it's not as maybe unhealthy, it fools your system into thinking it's real sugar and you don't lose weight. Really? Uh, mm. I've not found that to be the case. Well, that's that's what uh, that's one of the, the one of the uh, studies that I read that they say that if you're having trouble losing weight, stop the artificial sweeteners too, and you'll see. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, you know that I'm sorry. Uh, there's only so far I'm going. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, how many years more do I have to live? Should I spend them denying myself everything? Well, I, I agree with you, actually. You know, you want to be here and, and eat celery every day. Yeah. Now, you know, is, that, is that a life? Yeah. Mm. Now, I mean, if I were if I were Phil's age, I think I would want to make sure I don't drop dead of the widow maker, and that yeah. I that I take care of myself. But you know, right now, I mean, I went to my doctor this year, and he did me. It didn't you know? He's a cardiologist, among other things. He gives me a, a echocardiogram, and. Uh, I took it home. They're usually very expensive. No, uh, I, I gave me an echocardiogram, and I uh, uh, it, it worked out just perfectly. You know, I mean, he checked the. Uh, I only have a just just a minute amount of buildup in my aortic stenosis. Not enough. He said, if you if you gain this much every two years, like you lost, gained in the last two years, for the next fifty years, you wouldn't be in bad shape yet. You know. So, uh, 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 you know, and they checked, the, you know, all the other things with my heart. And my, bl my blood pressure is solid. My, my, uh, all my uh, LDLs and my HDLs and my LSDs and whatever are perfect. I mean, I, had, I really had a very good uh, uh, thing. So, I, you know, I figure it's the numb feet that are going to kill me. That's what I figure. Yeah, I, I went for my uh, colonoscopy colonoscopy uh, consultation today and I had my first blood pressure of 9763 I've never had one that wasn't a three digit and I, I said what, what the hell is that all about 9763 I've never had that I before. think you should be dead uh, yes, that's what that's I said a very low pressure I said isn't that isn't that kind of low I mean, shouldn't I be should I be mm -hmm. sitting here he says oh no it's not, not not much to worry about right now it's just a it's just kind of low this time Look, uh, really? you, look, you have no pulse, but it's nothing to worry yeah, about. Yeah, you're not dead, so don't worry about it. <laughs> as long as you're still walk, walking, we, but we don't detect the pulse, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they took my blood pressure like every 15 minutes. Uh, I was wired to a machine yeah. and uh, a remote control, and uh, every 15 minutes. And I was doing great until this morning. I got up, went to the bathroom. And the machine took my blood pressure, and that was the first time it was over 140. Wow. Ooh. 120. And, uh, so have they, and, had they told you, like, when are you going in for the rest of this stuff? Uh, well, uh, because of the blood and the urine thing, I have to do a CT scan. Well, that's scan. another thing, a, a blood and the urine, right? Yeah. What's well, a now I'm on Plavix, which is a blood thinner. No, that's a Jerry and, Lewis uh, drug. Yeah. Plavix. <laughs> Plavix, <laughs> Yeah. Do you know? Do you know what the favorite uh, Jerry Lewis vitamin is? Riboflavin. Uh, yes, I, yes. Uh, you you know you should try to do some more Jerry Lewis once in a while. It suits you. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's dead. How's that for an impression? Uh, yeah. uh, you know. But anyway, you know, I mean, it. Uh, so, so is, you have a little blood in your urine, so they're going to give you a CAT scan for that. I don't get it. But. CT scan, yeah. They uh, they want to, and then a uh, cystoscopy. They oh, want to oh. make sure that there isn't an issue with my bladder due to the uh, operation. That maybe uh, I uh, there's a leak uh, in the urethra or something where they sewed it together. And uh, so they want to make sure that I don't need another operation. Oh, God. You know, it, it, it never stops. This is kind of like going to the repair shop right. and having the guy say, well, you know, you, you wanted us to put in a new hose. But while we were looking at the hose, we noticed your engine <laughs> needs to be replaced. That's right. It's, yeah. it's called nickel and diming you to death. That's yeah. what happens with the cars when they get really old. They nickel and dime you to death. That's why you sell it and get a new one. Yeah. That's right. 
So well, anyway, they want to check that out, but I think it was uh, I didn't you I, I think it was just a, a one time occurrence because I had a uh, I had a they checked it before and it wasn't an issue. I just pushed too hard. Well, no, I think it may have something to do with the prostate mm -hmm. removal and that operation, and it's mm -hmm. causing a little bit of blood uh, here and there, and uh, you know. I'm not worried about the blood, your blood in the urine. If they've checked your bladder once before and you didn't have any, yeah, cancer uh, they, in there. Yeah. Well, they did, and uh, so what the uh, situation is is the guy just wants to cross his T's with the urologist. Here's before. here's what gets me though. Here's what gets me with all of them. It's what I was saying before. You know, with my urologist, he sticks these probes up my ass once every other visit, and every once every other visit, he wands me with his you know, thing to see my, my kidneys and so on and so forth. And I had this one other urologist who every time he found blood in my, uh, in my urine, which I've had for the last 15 years, except for this last checkup, I haven't in that blood. Um, he, would, he would keep giving me cystoscopies, one of mm -hmm. which got infected. Yeah. You know, I don't know. He, was, he probably forgot to wash his hands before he used the... The snake of death that he shoves up your dick. Yeah, they, they, you know, I was a little surprised that they stuck a wire into my heart instead of a wooden stake. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, we were we were hoping for the for the wooden stake, you know. Yeah. I thought, you know, she says you want to open the curtains. I said no. I usually don't go out at night yeah. uh, during the day. You know. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, your boy last night uh, gave a uh, speech. I think somewhere. And, rousing speech. A rousing speech and had to bring up Elizabeth Warren and make fun of her Indian heritage. Oh, you mean Pocahontas? See? See? Yeah. Uh, well, the uh, word on the street is uh, most of his supporters wish that he stayed away from the Me Too thing and the Pocahontas. But, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's entertaining his crowd. <laughs> you know what I noticed he thinks he is when he's up there now? He thinks he's a stand-up comic. Yeah. You know. So did Obama. Huh? No, Obama so, never thought he was a stand-up comic. Obama was, was funny, o though. Obama was a funny guy. You yeah. know. Uh, in casual interviews, he was very good. You know. Yeah. I saw him on that uh, Between Two Ferns. Yeah. Uh, he was great. Yeah. By the way, uh, so Rob, uh, a a have you been following the news at all? Or have you been no. trying to avoid no. it? I have... Uh, tuned out I, I fatigue i can't even listen i can't watch i can't listen i the only reason why i check in with it now is because we do this show and we come on here and i have to have something to talk about right uh, uh, and that's but, part of why another reason why I, I don't get on as much because i don't I get, I get a headache from it you know what i found i'm getting to really like cnn and i'll tell you why I find that they are the most even-handed of any of the networks. You find that, Kevin? Yeah. You know, um, it's not like, uh, you know, over at MSNBC, everybody is out to bash Trump and to tout whatever. Over at CNN, they seem to be more even-handed. So why he's always had a hard-on against CNN, I don't understand. Uh, maybe he just has a hard-on for anybody who doesn't agree with him. Have you compared the CNN coverage to the Fox coverage? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he would prefer the Fox coverage over the CNN. Well, he would prefer it because it's kissing his ass. He should, be, right bashing, he should be bashing MSNBC like No Tomorrow. Well, uh, they're beyond bashing. His, his but... son is going out with an anchor woman at Fox. He uh, just hired the guy who used to be Ailes second, his aide-de-camp. Okay, who got fired for not watching the farm close enough. Is he going to be his new uh, communications director? Yeah, right. Yeah, that guy. Mr. It's okay for uh, this ugly fat fuck to be trying to stick his dick in everything at Fox, including maybe the woman who Trump's son is going out with now. You know, I mean, it's just what, what is this? It's incestuous with Fox. Yeah, well, there'll be nobody left. They'll all be in the administration. I guess. <laughs> you know. Um, but I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's just all, it's just, I, and I, I agree completely with, with, uh, with uh, Rob. I mean, it, it, 
it's gotten to the point where I have a hard time watching it because the news is not, and they're not giving me news. You know, it's not even that. I, it's not because it's not even news. It's, you know, they give you a 30 second headline and then they do 10 minutes of talking around that, which nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. They're all spinning it however they want to spin Thank it. It's not even yeah. that. It's just that it gets more and more bizarre, like this guy Pruitt, right? Yeah. Leaves this guy there in the EPA, and he's 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 as corrupt as a as a as anybody who's ever been in in a cabinet position, and he he doesn't even he doesn't even care. He thanks him for his job. Yeah, you th I can get that forty two thousand dollars soundproof booth from the government surplus. Oh, it's, it can yeah. be available. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I, I, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know what was possessing a guy like Pruitt. And who was the other guy? Remember the guy who also took a, a trips and they got rid of him? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, what do these guys do? Do they go into the government and think it's like a blank, a, a blank check? Is he still there? I think he was very wealthy, and his wife said a few things that yes. were... No, he's uh, gone. That was Munchen, M Mnuchin, or oh, whatever Mnuchin? his name is. He's still there. No, no, no. Yeah, he's still there. No, Treasurer. No, no, you're mixing Treasurer. up Mnuchin yeah. with this other guy and his wife who was, you know, wearing very expensive frocks, and they were taking private jets to Europe, supposedly on, quote, business. But I can't remember who that was. Uh... You know who I'm talking about, right, Kevin? Am I wrong? There was somebody else besides Mnuchin. Some, might have been Mnuchin. I, you know, Mnuchin was was uh, accused of some of that with his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but he's not there anymore. I know you're talking about. No, yeah. Mnuchin's there. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, Mnuchin, yeah, yeah, the other guy is gone. Whoever he yeah. was, I'm trying to remember now. So, you know, as I say, I, I, when he drained I, I, the when he drained the swamp, he was draining it so he could get what was what was at the bottom of the swamp and move it into the White House. Oh, well, he drained it all right. He just filled it with more slime. Yeah. Well, no, he cleaned the swamp is what he did. So we should all move over to the swamp. By, by the way, see, nothing was, to choose from besides the swamp in, in Washington. You know, right. they're they're all swamp monsters. Well, you know, the news item that that uh, uh, has been kind of getting a lot more play and I am happy about this uh, because it, it relieves us from this whole Washington t uh, tedium is I really want to thank those kids in Thailand for getting trapped in a cave because <laughs> if it weren't for so them we'd have nothing but political news but at least some of these news outfits are spending some time now with that story but they're playing it up for every dramatic thing they possibly can you know. Well, it's true. I mean, they're running out of air. Uh, there was a <laughs> diver that uh, also ran out of air when he was trying to deliver air, yeah. uh, yes. oxygen to these kids. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, and uh, the cave is filling up with more water. I, I mean, this is a this is a terrible thing, and it's. I think it's a. They're a mile below the surface. Yeah. It takes five hours. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, it takes professional divers five hours to get to them. Now, so there's no way you're going to yeah. rescue these guys. I, 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 well, you have to do what's called staged bottles. I cave dive, and I've dove uh, several times uh, in the cenotes in uh, the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, the rule of thumb is one-third of your air in, one-third of your air out, and the other third is your backup reserve. And you normally wear the, you know, <clears throat> Go in and you take tanks with you, and you stage the tanks. What do you, so you what do you what do you take with you? Tanks. You're welcome. Tanks. Yes. Thank you. Because uh, what happens is uh, you might make several in, in, uh, incursions in, into the cave, but you only go so far, and then you leave backup tanks. Then you come out, and you then do one main dive where you can change tanks as you go, but. Uh, for one reason or another, this guy ran out of air. I don't know how he could have. Well, wait a minute. My question is, you see, I don't The part of the story I don't understand, and if some of you have been following this, you can elucidate me on this uh, little piece of information. Mm -hmm. uh, wh how did they get into this cave in the first place? And if they got into that cave, why isn't it just as easy to get out? 
They walked in before the rain. Okay, I get that. Then the rain, what, flooded the caves? Right. Oh, so they were able to walk along a path uh, uh, through the caves, mm -hmm. and then when they got to that part, the water filled yeah. up. Filled the cave uh, pretty much completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I think that the Thai diver might have had some sort of mishap because for him to lose his air, it's got to be a planned ascent and descent. So you, you don't, you know, so probably, I don't know what happened. Maybe you got disoriented. And, and that's hard to do, too, because you lay, you lay a cable or a little, uh, you have a reel with... Uh, with uh, well, they have, a, they have some kind of a rope or something that they follow. Yeah. 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 You know, I have one of those. So, so if I'm actually going into a, a cave, I usually only go into caves that have already got the string there and the line is there for show. Yeah. But, you know, uh, and, and <clears throat> it's what you follow. But if you silt out and it's all mud and uh, you can't see, there's no visibility. And, and they're going five hours of that to get to the to get to the kids. So it's a 10 hour round trip. Right. And, and what he was bringing to the kids was oxygen tanks. Well, plus, that, that environment's probably changing all the time when they're pumping water out and there's the water coming in. It's probably Did changing all the time. On the 4th, they were actually mistakenly pumping water in. And I not didn't say that. Shit. Yeah, but, they, but they, the, in the water they're pumping out now, they're pumping out several million gallons a day. I mean, it's yeah, an enormous Elon Musk amount. is saying that he wants to get involved in coming up with some way of getting the water out. Yeah. But uh, hello, yeah. Patrick. Yeah. Have you been following the Thailand kids? Yeah, it's fucked up. It, it, no shit. I love the way you parse your words carefully. Uh, I'll take the twenty-five-year-old uh, coach with yeah. all these all twelve and thirteen-year-old kids. He's gonna if, if they get out of there, he's gonna have to answer some questions as to how he let them get in there. Why he. Uh, why he let that happen? Well, if if in fact it was like he's a flash, gonna, he's going to get a new job. If, if, if it were in fact like a flash flood or something like that, that's not something he could predict. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, just going there, mm -hmm. putting yeah, the in a way like that, he could have said, "No, we're not going to do that." I think that once the water came in, they had to go further in to escape the water. Yeah. Yes, Patrick. The biggest question I would have for him is. You live here, you know it's the rain season. What did you think was going to happen? I mean, I know uh, with my grandpa, he fought over in the Pacific during World War II, and he said it was either hot as fuck, or if it was the rain season, it was just, it was miserable either way. And you Fucking know what yeah. the monsoons are coming. And that's the part that I don't get with the coach and those kids. I could see a couple of the kids wandering into the cave being kids right. and, the, and the coach saying, you know what, we don't want to risk it. We know what time of year it is. Let's just head back out. It just, and, you know, in, in that part of the world, the rain, just like in Florida, if you've been to Florida, uh, the sky can open up in the afternoon, and for five minutes, it will just downpour like hell, and then it'll stop. Well, it's as unpredictable over in 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 the in Asia, the same way during the rain season. Only it doesn't. It just rains and rains and it's rains. It's a rainforest. Hey, Patrick, do you know if that soccer team won or lost their game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they lost now. Yeah, it's, they lost now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so that would be the only, not the only, but that would be the first question I would have for that. Is do you live here? You know, and I wonder. I wonder about this story. You know, the story has really caught fire. I mean, it has an emotional impact, so that's why the news people do it, <clears throat> and they play it all the way for all yeah. the weight of its emotional impact. But if this were happened, say, in a different country, let's say it happened in North Korea, would we give a shit? 
Yeah. Yes. Or is it because Thailand is so neutral in its in its place in the world that we can somehow invest our emotions in them? Yes, Patrick. I'm guessing we would. We would have the interest in it. But the difference would be, would they allow any outside help? And okay. Thailand, they Thailand are. is allowing everybody. Yeah. No, no. There, there are Americans there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's my point, is if it was North Korea, uh, I'm guessing European countries, other Asian countries would want to help, but would North Korea allow it? If, you if know, they were trapped in a cave in North Korea, that would be a lifestyle improvement. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, pause for a laugh here. Okay. <laughs> now on to uh, Jeff. Yeah, tighten that up. Okay. Yeah, tighten yeah. it up. Tighten it up. Uh, uh, we'll get back to you on that. The, uh, the the joke doctor is in, and we'll figure it out for you. Yes, Jeff. All right. Well, I, I used to dive, so I, but I'd never at this kind of level, because I didn't want to kill myself, you know. And I know Phil's done a lot more than I've ever thought about. And his, you know, I've I've been through so-called the directions on how to do this stuff, yeah. even though I never did it really. Yeah. But his descriptions are very clear and very direct, and and the, and when you do this with a bunch of kids in an environment that's likely to happen, and you're in trouble. Those are people. Just that... being underwater is, and and not being able to, you know, it's not like you're swimming in a swimming pool, okay? Right. Well, well, once you're underwater. And you're over an overhead environment. Right, you just you just scared shit. Let's put it think that. Of, and they're weak. Think of the mind fuck going on if you're one of those people down there, thinking, "Oh my god!" Right? Just think about what you must feel like. Your air is running out. There's no food down there, right? Uh, well, well, there is now. They, they brought food. In. <laughs> oh, they did bring food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they got the flies. That, okay. That's what the fields were doing. As well, they were bringing uh, oxygen. They were bringing some masks, I guess, to try to, if they're going to teach the kid how to fucking do this. But food was also part of it and water so that they yeah. actually had sustenance. It's crazy. Well, they're, they're talking about divers in the front of, in front of and behind so that they can uh, guide the kids one at a time as they scuba. And, you know, you can teach somebody in two hours how to use a regulator in a pool and you know some people some people will never learn well, if your life depends you on know, it, learn. Well, that, that's uh, motivation is a good thing but, <laughs> yeah. but there's certain people that are naturally good at it and there's certain well, people this, that are not uh, this, great learners on this, this just came through three hours ago from ABC a proposed plan to rescue the boys soccer treat team uh, in Thailand could launch as soon as this weekend. According to internal U.S. government report obtained by ABC News, the Royal Thai Navy, supported by divers from the United Kingdom and the United States and other nations, has briefed the Thai military leadership, interior ministry officials, and provincial governor on a proposed operation to evacuate the 12 boys and their coach. Uh, what they're going to do is a thing called buddy diving, uh, Thailand's Prime Minister will be briefed on it. Despite the risk, the accelerated timeline would take advantage um, of uh, the children still having high oxygen levels within the cave. I think that's what they worried about. I have an about. idea. I don't know why they haven't thought of this. Uh, you can have a pod that is actually a scuba unit that if you put the kid in, the, in this one-person pod, you can pull the pod behind you uh, and the scuba unit would be in there and you know there's different ways of using scuba you can have a full face mask which uh allows uh, the air and communication and things like that so why couldn't the pod just be one a uh, scuba unit uh self-contained uh and you put the kid in there they're 11 years old they can't be that big and uh they look pretty skinny to me and then you just pull them through I, you know i i just uh, one at a time i just don't see why they can't do that as long as the pod is small enough to fit through. Phil, the Phil, while I think that it's admirable that you've come up with an idea here, 
don't you think they've already thought that one out and, and well, discarded the only, it? The only problem with the pod is controlling the buoyancy. But I think that they'd be able to control it remotely, you know, uh, letting, letting uh, you know, adding air and taking uh, air out of like a bladder. Uh, we have something that we dive with called a BCD or a buoyancy control device, and you put air in yeah, it. But what I'm saying you, is, what I'm saying is, you're, what you're suggesting is a pod, and that pod would be dragged along through the cave, right? And and the fact so is, have you seen the inside of that cave? Uh, some some pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah pod, it, it's it, it, it. What happens when you hit an area where the pod is? It, 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 can't it, it, it can't turn or isn't wide enough or whatever yeah. you know yeah, is it, is it does it work in high current too well there's no current in the cave no be any current it looked it looked to me everything i saw was look like there was a lot of current going on in there every every time i've dove in a cave there's never been current. yeah but the, you didn't have a cave that was being filled with water from floods what? Caves I dive in are completely filled with water. Oh, I mean, oh, you're saying that the water the rushing water, in. The water is not water that was there two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's right. water yeah, that has rushed what, in. That's what I'm saying. It looks like they were working in current water, water mm -hmm. that's got current in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Crazy. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I feel for these kids, but, but you know, like yeah. I have, as you know, toxic claustrophobia. That's why. That's the only fear I have with his doctor with the feet is not that he's going to tell me that I'm going to die from numb feet or whatever, but that he's going to say, you got to have an MRI, and I will not have an MRI. You will not put me in one of those fucking machines. I can't. I would well, just, I would. have gone in the cave. I would be screaming like crazy. So, you know, I don't know what I would do if I were one of those kids and I had my claustrophobia. And now I'm being asked to leave this this area underwater, going through caves. Although you wouldn't you wouldn't be in the cave because you'd never go I, in. I will tell you something. I went, <laughs> Shecky and I coming back from California, once uh, by car went to some caves down south here from here. What are some of the caves down there, Rob? There's a big uh, Carl, oh, no. the Carlsbad. No, no, that, no, that's that's on the west coast. I'm talking on the east coast. Uh, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. How Virginia. caverns or what? Uh, how caverns? No, there's another one. Oh. And, yeah. Anyway, huge cave. You and we went down in there, and there was an area they called uh, I can't remember what they called it, but it was a place where I we we had to go through, and we were following along this path, and we had to crouch down. All of a sudden, I realized. I was in one of the most claustrophobic situations I've ever been in in my life. Uh -huh. And I wasn't panicking. And I think I figured the answer out why, because there was somebody in front of me and there was somebody in back of me. Mm -hmm. And somehow that alleviated the claustrophobia. So if I have to have an MRI, I need somebody or two people in there with me. Yeah, <laughs> was pushing you. They were just as close. To but, but but uh, uh, I and I came out of there and I went. I didn't have claustrophobia with that. I just got through it because. And I suddenly realized it was because there were people in front of me and people in back of me, and it we were a group of people, and I didn't feel the claustrophobia because of that. Even though, you know, basically it was a very thin, low, kind of thing. However. I was in uh, Greece with my ex-girlfriend, and she said, oh, come on, we've got to go down. There's this, this tunnel that runs from one end of the island to the other, and we can get in it right here. And to get in it, you had to go through a slit in the wall that was about a little bit wider than I am. And you couldn't do it walking forward. You had to do it walking sideways. And I started to do it, and I think I got half my body in there. And then I started to panic. I said, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I let her go. And it was only a matter of maybe 15 feet that we had to go. Along. I couldn't do it. And I was afraid that even if I could do it, I couldn't get out. Didn't you say that you went to Belize and into the blue, the blue Hole, which is a diving site? No, I didn't. No. You didn't say that? No. Oh. No. All right. Uh, uh, there's the How Caverns, 
uh, Cave of the Winds, Luray Caverns, Florida Caverns, and Linville Caverns no, are none the of biggest those. ones on the East Coast. No, none of those. What was the first? What was the first one? Uh, uh, Cave of the How Luray? No. Florida State Park Caverns mm. and Linville. No. No. How is the one that I'm most familiar with when I was a kid? They were, every, all my friends had gone, and yet everybody had bumper stickers on their cars. Yeah, yeah. How caverns? When you get a chance, uh, uh, Rob, after the show, listen to it and listen to how your mic sounds. I don't know. It might be some adjustment with your mic, not the... I know. haven't touched this. Can you, can, you, can you take the bass off of it a little bit? I, I hate to touch it because I use it for so many things. Yeah. Actually, not lately. I haven't even been up here. Until yeah. Since the last time I was on GabNet, I haven't even been up here. Yeah. Uh, you know, Rob, my my unit is dying. And I looked at another one called the Personas uh, 16. And they have something, uh, a button, where you can save your settings. So, because it, it's digital. And so, uh, when you get the settings the way you want it for a specific band or a specific item... Uh, you just save it. Uh, yeah. and okay, okay, Phil. We don't need uh, that right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's driving us into a ditch. Uh, <laughs> and it costs how much, Phil? $1,100. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Hey, that's just uh, go, you know, your uh, go, uh, go, you know, to my computer for a couple of years. You know? it, I mean, yeah, it's, it logged me in for three years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Imagine, they wanted to charge me $350. I found another way of doing it for $6.95 $6 a year. You, for the you know first year. who's going to buy uh, that uh, Log Me In? They, they and were, the other company? They, they were already, the one that's charging you six ninety five right now. Uh, yeah, right, exactly. Exactly. But no, they, it, uh, uh, yeah, no next year will be sixty nine ninety five. Big deal. Big difference from, from 350 bucks. they wanted to raise my rate. You know, for a program that isn't this new one is better than the than log me in. I like it better. But anyway, uh, all I'm saying is is that uh, um, uh, I have to get a new board. By the way, uh, what was I going to say? Ah, fuck it. I don't know what I wanted to say. I'll send that. I also want, you want to screw with it? Huh? Does I'll that send sound better? Want to screw with it? You can have it. What do you mean? What board? That you have. Uh, it's a Behringer 24. Oh, uh, no, it's too big. 40. It's too big. I need a smaller footprint. Oh. I need a smaller footprint. But if you want to send it to me, I'll I'll be happy to. Yeah, yeah. That's that's awfully big. All right. Yeah, that's awfully big because I I have to have it right here, and it it yeah. Well, anyway, where were we? Why are we talking mm -hmm. about this? Anyway. So anyway, we got the kids there, and it, 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 thank God for that story because at least it gives us a little respite from just this constant uh, the Trump stuff. Uh, and I really wish, and I'm I'm hoping, and I'm praying that uh, uh, these news people will suddenly say, you know, last night I heard one of them say he's giving a speech. Maybe we'll cover it if anything interesting happens. So they're starting to lighten up on covering everything this guy does. It's the low-hanging fruit. And, you know, when they're looking for a story, they got to have 24-7 uh, uh, information. Uh, you know, that's the low-hanging fruit. You know what I, what I would like? I would like to get my news from the Cartoon Network. Let me explain my thinking on this. That's why you get it from no, MSNBC. No, if, if in fact... Uh, they ran news on the Cartoon Network and only when something new happened and then they ran cartoons the rest of the time, that would be a format I could get behind. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, listen, uh, Trump's giving a speech. Here's Bugs Bunny, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah. So, I mean, I, I just, I, 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 uh, I... It's just amazing to me because what they do with, the, with these news people, what they do is they got, as you say, 24-7 to fill up. So they're going to fill with whatever they can find. And if there's no other news and uh, um, uh, Elizabeth Warren farts accidentally in public, they're going to go for five hours on that. 
you know? So. Yeah. But I wonder if a tomahawk? Still... Hmm? Does she carry a tomahawk? You know, the all, you know, you know what the statement was that she made? Do you know what the statement was she made? Yeah, she uh, ticked a uh, thing that said that she was uh, American Indian on a application. I don't believe that's something. the story. No, she she actually said that her mother said she was maybe she was part Indian because she had high cheekbones. And that's that started the whole thing about her saying that she was an Indian. Oh, but I, be I believe she's being accused of using it to gain uh, a, a leg up uh, uh, or, you know, a little bit of more scalp uh, uh, for an application. I don't know if it was for a school or for a job or uh, something like that. I, I guess I could Google it, you know. They were talking about uh, checking the other box yeah. for her, for her uh, school application. Yeah, and she said American Indian. Yeah. She paid. yeah, because she, because of a family uh, uh, a tale that she was told, I guess, by her mother. They say and, supposedly, and she yeah. he probably wants her to produce all those documents like they, everybody wants him to produce his taxes. Uh, he, I think he wants her to get a DNA test. Yeah, well, why don't we see yeah. his so taxes let's first? Let's see his taxes first. Well, uh, if he get a DNA, he should get a DNA test, too, you know. Just yeah, make, maybe he should. Well, if he yeah. got a DNA test, he'd come up Nazi. Probably have metal in it. <laughs> yeah. Traces. By the way, anybody what? else do the DNA testing here? You want to hear how paranoid I am about these DNA tests? Uh, okay, go I, ahead. I refuse to do them because I am so paranoid that the government's going to somehow, because who knows how this government is going, fascism and all that. I don't want the government to have access to who and what I am, what my DNA says I am. Well, let's say I kill somebody down the road and they find and they use that DNA to convict me. You know, uh, uh, I don't want to give them, you know, uh, I give away my Fifth Amendment rights uh, by uh, by having a test done that's going to tell me. Would you what please my uh, would you please tell me what's the Fifth Amendment again? Uh, right to not self-incriminate. Uh, not right. self-incriminate. Okay, so your blood would be self-incriminating. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, my DNA would. You know, if uh, let's say I let's say I shoot. Well, the DNA, the DNA is also used to exonerate people as well. Yeah, but chances are I'll be guilty. <laughs> like what they're doing all the kids, you know, down there in the in the cages, they're going to take all their DNA like they're doing there down there now. They do that to prisoners. Oh, listen, every I, I, yes, uh, uh, Pat Patrick, and then I got something to t tell you about I saw on TV today. It was not to be believed. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, and I'm exactly the opposite. I give a fuck. I mean, I, I've had so many surgical procedures and shit where my <laughs> exactly. DNA is all over. I'm I with you. Fine. Fine. It's not, it's not hey, listen, I've, 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 I've left my DNA on dates I went out with. <laughs> <laughs> Look what happened to Bill Clinton. I have no fear of the government with that. They're going to get me anyway. Fuck it. Yep. We got blood, DNA, all kinds of crap on me. Yeah, I don't want to be in their database. But, but it's not in a database. Oh, yeah, it is. It, it, wait, 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 for a moment, all over the let, place. Me, let, me, <laughs> let me talk some sense into Rob here for, for a moment about that. Uh, because you're, you're absolutely right. You have every reason to fear what you fear. But have you ever thought about taking yourself off the grid? And you can't. And you can't. There's no. no way. So no matter what, you give them a little blood or something. It's nothing compared to the rest of the shit they got on you. But I'm not going to voluntarily give it to them. Yeah, I don't care. Nine ninety nine or whatever. I don't want to be in some database somewhere. But you are already. Yeah, I am. Friend, but so. but nobody has, to my knowledge, because we you know the all the HIPAA stuff. If you're to believe that we're we still have some level of medical privacy, there is no record of what my DNA is in terms of my heritage. Yeah. But how do you go off off the grid? That's my question. I, I don't know if it's possible. It's almost impossible even to cut your cable, let alone go off the grid. <laughs> well, no, because I was yeah. thinking, like, let me, let, me, let me say for a moment that I, that I had a kid. And now I want to make sure this kid never gets on the grid. What can I do to prevent the kid from getting on the grid? And there's, pre there's precious, 
huh? when he's born, smother him. Yeah, that's about that's it. What you can do. You know, yeah. my brother. My brother does the same thing. He, he or the equivalent of smothering him. Give him a Jewish mother. Uh, <laughs> he refuses to, you know, buy a new, car, you know, buy a, a phone. He refuses to bank. He refuses to do any of that crap. And I go, I tell him, you're on the grid. You you bank? Yeah. Well, I pay cash for everything. I don't care. You still you're still mm -hmm. somewhere on the internet. Is this he got pissed thing? off when he saw the Google car drive by his house. And you know, doing the the mapping. Well, well, he uh, was me, calling me, Google, telling add. him, you know, I'm going to sue them. I'm going to sue them. I saw him drive by and take my picture. I said, go ahead. You know, uh, they're. Uh, uh, he looked him up and he saw his picture on the Google thing. And, let me let me just throw this out at you. Oh, for, first Jeff. Yes, Jeff. Well, uh, what Kevin just said, I I, I agree with you 100 percent that 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 you're not going to solve that problem that your brother. Uh, is, is trying to do. However, I feel the same way that I just I just want to keep as much as my own information. Yeah, I'll say privately. It's yeah. Not even if it's anything that I care about it, but it's just it's, it's just impossible. so much. Yeah. It's just, you have yeah. no idea. You have no idea really what they're doing with that data. You're what dope. are they doing with with what what they're collecting from all these people? What are, what are they? What's the end goal with it? Nothing. Is it is it not cataloged somewhere? I mean, I've googled his name, and okay. it's there all over the place. How, do, how, how many how, how many here are paranoid about identity theft? Uh, I am, and I'm get, I'm getting beat up left and right. Oh, uh, uh, what what do you mean you're getting beat up left and right? Uh, the last month or so, there's been some spurious charges on my company uh, thing, and I've had to protest them. I'm thinking about switching banks and, and doing something different, you know, and it's a pain in the ass because I have so many automatic payments. Uh, but, uh, you know, my business account, you know, I write checks, so, uh, and these checks, people can take the number and the routing number, and boom, you know, sure. they're making... Uh, you know, I just discovered one for four hundred and seventy dollars. I had a protest on Thursday, uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday. Well, and, I well, uh, it, I, I had a I had a, one of my bank cards, my uh, ATM card, got compromised uh, somewhere. You know, it could it could be they didn't even they just you know it took it out of a draw of just picking numbers and things like that. But anyway, that's the only time it's really happened to me. Do you know that in the last 15 years I haven't changed my password? And if I've had to, there are a couple of other alternates, and that's it. You're pretty lucky. I've had a. <laughs> some of these programs make you change it, and and yes. and the and then I can never remember what I changed it to. Uh, you know, even if I write it down, I can't remember where I put the piece of paper where I wrote it down. Uh, I always add a zero to mine. And then they tell me to do it again later on, and I add another zero. And then I can't remember how many zeros I've added to it for that particular right. account. So now I have my uh, uh, my notepad here on uh, on my Mac, and I write down every time I have a new password for something, you know. Yeah. But it, it's it's always it, you know I try to if somebody, steals, if somebody steals that computer, or if somebody remote controls into your computer. Yeah, well, they can do that. Uh, everybody, yeah. everybody who who is on Gabnet can remote control into one of my computers. That's how we how we do our thing. Except for Jack, it's going to take him forever to learn how to do it. So probably, probably only take me another year. Yeah, no, this one <laughs> will be so. Yeah, I, found out, I found out. I found out. I found out. Than anybody, but he's not letting on, so he he can eventually take everybody's stuff. If worse, if worse comes to worse on this new deal, what happens yeah. is you download the program. You put it, you install it in your machine. That's all very simple. And then uh, you tell that machine that you want it to be online as, a, as one of the machines, right? And then I can go on your machine and do all the stuff that needs to be done to get you up and running. Okay. <laughs> But you probably won't. We, we, we yeah, probably won't have to. That's a good way we to probably won't games. have to do that. It is this new system is so simple. It really, in the end, is no different than the way you were doing it before, and much more accurate and uh, much more flawless. I heard you ask had anybody done a, a DNA thing on themselves, and I've uh, 
actually done two. Yeah. I did the 23 and Me. Mm-hmm. I just sent off the Ancestry one. Well, that's that you're, you sent your blood to the Mormons or your spit to the Mormons. It, it'll be interesting. Yeah find out if they I, I, used to work for, I used to work for the Mormons I worked well, for Barnesville well you know you know how you, you know how ancestry DNA started is that the the Mormon church for years has had a DNA uh, yeah. uh, program to find out that Mormons are pure Mormons or whatever and so now they've taken this whole technology and are applying it to people sending in their spit and I sent in my spit it's, to find out I was ninety nine percent to find out I was ninety nine percent Jewish. Wow. <laughs> hey, uh, wow. I thought the only thing you needed to do to be a Mormon was tithe ten percent. No, no. I thought that was all religion. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. So you have to run a benefit. Yeah. There's always a lunch involved. <laughs> Uh, no, but so uh, so what did your what did what did your what did your it. DNA say, uh, Jack? Uh, oh, well, uh, I did it uh, to confirm some family stories. I didn't uh, uh, <clears throat> I didn't expect any surprises, but I did get one. I, I had already figured out that I was probably seventy five percent ethnically sub Saharan African. And probably 25% something else. Well, I was off by one percentage point. It came back 74% sub Saharan African, and the other percentage was, uh, was split up based on uh, uh, national origin. Uh, it confirmed the uh, German part of my family that I already knew about because of people telling stories about how uh, my family originally wound up in Texas mm -hmm. and there was a slight trace of Asian and that was confirmed because I knew part of my uh, one of my my dad's great great grandfather I think I got that right uh, was Chinese and worked on the railroad when they were building it to central Texas because uh, at that time Chinese men could come to the country but Chinese women couldn't because they wanted to have those coolies come work and go home and if you have women around they stay and have families and the next thing you know you got a whole population but the real shock turned out I am 20 percent Irish and the best I can determine from that, and this is not from any family stories, it's from what I don't know. I know very little about my mother's mother's family, other than what the name was. And the name is an Irish name. You know, what would be interesting is if the new one that you just sent off comes back with the same yeah. uh, uh, breakdown. Yeah, that's what I'm inter interested in seeing. Plus... The other one is a little bit more specific about geography. But um, as Alex knows, or anybody who's read any Southern history, no matter what your ethnic breakdown was, if you were in the South, if you had one drop, just one drop, I say, brothers and sisters, of African blood, you were black. Well, like in the, the uh, whorehouses in uh, Storyville in uh, uh, New Orleans. I, I, I was never there. I was never there, Alex. I never went yeah. to any whorehouse in New Orleans when they had an NAB convention. The, the, the women, <laughs> the, the black hookers, were partial, part, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> uh, were, were, well, they had names for them. And uh, the, the best one, the one that was the most... Uh, Desired were the octoroons. Yes, the uh, they had quadroons. You know, quadroons, octoroons, octoroons are one eighth, one eighth white, I guess, or one eighth black. Oh, one eighth black. Yeah, but if you were one eighth black, you were still black. Yeah, you know, and and uh, uh, it was a it was a very very complicated pecking order about who was. According to the Nazis, if you were a one sixteenth Jew, uh, you were Jewish. And that's some pretty strong stuff, man. That's strong blood. 
Yeah, one sixteenth. Yeah. Yeah. So they, you know, when they were looking. Well, and they kept records too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they, and you know, you know, uh, helped them keep those records. Uh, I think the Russians have them. No, you do you know who helped them keep those records? Who created the system for keeping those records? Uh, it, don't tell me it's IBM. You're absolutely correct. Wow. Mm-hmm. IBM, uh, Hitler was paying IBM to come up with a, a system to keep track of all the Jews that they had incarcerated. Hitler was, was better country? at that than Trump is with immigrants. Hey, Obama lost 4,000 of them, too. By the way, I saw a guy on today. So I can't remember who he was. Some Republican douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> who who was saying that, well, you know, the reason we can't let these kids go is because, you know, there are people going to claim they're their parents just so they can get into this country. Can you imagine if they send these kids to someone that wasn't their parent, that was maybe a gang member? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what you're doing? You're coming up with science. You're coming up with... One kid winds up Wait a minute. You're, wait a minute. you're coming up with a science fiction scenario. To justify no. putting these kids behind a fence. Hey, and, and, and the other thing that you're it ends what? up in the wrong hands. Uh, uh, that, Schumer and his, and his cronies oh, are going to have a hate. You, you are buying and such big bullshit. Well, what would you Republicans do? What would so, you Republicans do? Uh, uh, the other thing uh, that uh, uh, Phil, you're, you're forgetting. Wait a minute, Phil, 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 be quiet. The other, other thing you're forgetting Trump. is knee-jerk Trump should have thought of all this before he started doing this. Never think about anything. It's cause and effect. Everything, everything's not a simplistic answer. It's called vetting. Yeah, yeah. we had a, had a better job of vetting. You know, what to do. We wouldn't have the asshole we have now. Well, look, Ray's with us, and he's hey! he's outdoors once again. I'm cooking steak. You co- <laughs> In honor of Phil's I've heart. More. <laughs> My steak days are over. I know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty it for much, you. Pretty much, pretty much, he's on an all oatmeal diet from here on in. Yeah, it's uh, string beans. Well, Phil, actually, beans. actually, uh, your, your steak days are not over. It's just moderation. Yeah, you know, uh, when I had my bypasses, they said, "Hey, you could still have beef. Just don't do it all the time. Don't do anything all the time." There's a problem with that. Is if you don't have it for a long time, then how did we get? How did, wait a minute, how did we suddenly it's get? even better. How did we suddenly get from talking about kids behind fences? Well, they like to your through. heart again. <laughs> because it's my they're, fault. They're not having. One. Oh yes, because you brought up the stakes. That was it, Ray. Yeah. You yep, troublemaker, yep. you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah the guy who re- who exercises more than probably everybody on the panel has to bring up stakes. Well, I uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and who is the second most exercising person on the panel? You. Can you believe it? I mean, I went again today. I did. Well, I, I, did. I think Patrick uh, takes the uh, thing. Uh, he goes how many miles a day? Uh, I average between four and six miles a day running. And then uh, doing weights. Oh, right on, man. Yeah. General uh, day-to-day activity. So. Well, I do about six miles on the bike. And I then don't and, get anywhere. And, and then and then I go. Uh, th- then I go. I go elsewhere in the gym and use the implements of torture. I do a couple of those every time I'm there, and then I leave. <laughs> You know, I used to go to the gym almost every day. I did a what's called a tribathlon, and that's the sauna, the jacuzzi, and, and a shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I enjoy oh, most about working out is I'm now, sh- when I wasn't working out, I forgot to shower for several days in a row. And now every, more, and every time I come home from the gym, i got to shower, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that and that's the best kind of shower is when you got sweat all over you and you you have to take a shower. So now you got more laundry. I do have more laundry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Patrick. That's the best kind of sex too. What? <laughs> oh. Sweat. Oh, sweaty sex. 
terrible. Yeah. Uh, meh. What do you mean, nah, Jack? <laughs> Doing it wrong if you're not sweating. No, he's just, we're trying, both he and I, when it comes to sex, are, are working on, uh, what do they call it, uh, sense memory. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the Stanislavski approach yeah, to sex. Yes, it's sense memory. Uh, yeah. The method, method acting sex. But see, I think I, re I think I remember I did this once about four or five years ago, dear. Uh <laughs> I remember I had a cat who uh, my wife had altered because she had all my male, our male cats altered. I finally got rid of her before she got around to me. And uh, she had my, this one cat altered. And he, every now and then, would go up to the female cat and hop on her back, you know, and they grab the nape of their neck, you know, and start pounding a little bit towards her. And then about halfway through, he would forget what the fuck he was doing. <laughs> and I said, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> well, it has. <laughs> you know, I, mean. yeah, I remember uh, uh, here recently, um, uh, I climbed into bed with Donna, and she was feeling amorous. And I said, no, not tonight. I got a headache from doing Gavnet. <laughs> See? You were using Bad for the, you. you were using the gabnet defense. Yes, yes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. You know, dealing with Phil had me out the out of the mood for days. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so uh, you know, uh, what a strange world we're living in, huh? Yep. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I. I try to think about where would I want to move to just to get away from it all. And I and I, there are very few places in the world anymore you can go and get away from it all. Well, what is getting away from it from it all for you, Alex? Uh, I I think getting away from it, the true test of whether I got away from it all is when my uh, I Apple Watch doesn't work where I am. Huh? Is that All a good you indicator? Do is take your Apple Watch off and go back to wearing the Timex. What that piece of shit? <laughs> it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. You know, I still have. <laughs> I got to tell you, I still have a love for the technology. I don't like what technology is doing to the world, but I have a love for the technology. I mean, this this new Apple phone, it, Phil, you'll agree with me. It's the best Apple phone they ever made, right? It, it's 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 a nice phone. I don't yeah. know that it's worth the money. I mean, I was just as happy with my Apple 5 uh, as uh, I am with this. I love and the fact that it recognizes my face. At least somebody does. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it, so it loses it on some programs. On my, uh, it, there's like a, it, it has to ask you if you want the program to recognize your face. Yes, but that's for like certain bank things and things like that. You used to have to just, you have to, you used to have to use, use your thumbprint. Now it just says, let me see if I recognize you. Yeah, you can get into Bank of America. Mm. That, you know, that's all. But it's, it's it, believe it or not, your face is a far better uh, uh thing than your thumbprint so if i had a picture of you and your phone i just hold your picture up to the phone it come in it wouldn't work no no you know why because what it does is it makes a uh, a, a rendering and i wish i wish they would show you the rendering of, yeah. of your face with like three thirty thousand different points in depth and so on and so forth so if you put up a flat picture that's not going to work it doesn't doesn't take long for it to do it either. No, it does it very fast, pain. very yeah. fast. So yeah. it's better than the thumb because my my seven the yeah. thumb thing works great. Well, thumb I thing it. was a great idea, but the face thing is much more secure than the thumb. You know, oh, you uh, know what also is nice about the ten? Unless you have a twin speakers, mm -hmm. it has stereo speakers and it and it has a much better sound. Than my ah. S plus did. It does have two speaker, really nice speakers on the bottom, but I never listened to it. So you know that way. I uh, some I walk the dog. I'll put some music on. I stick it in my pocket and yeah. and I listen to it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Um, with the facial recognition, the question I have is: if somebody were to pick it up while you were sleeping. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Could they unlock your phone? <laughs> well, because the we- reason I asked is with the finger of the thumbprint, they would have, you would be jostled awake if somebody tried to unlock your phone, whereas if your face is exposed, Somebody could just hold it over your face. Well, hold on a second. You better sleep on your stomach, Patrick. Let me turn this thing. Let me turn this thing on and close my eyes and see if it still recognizes. It, it won't me. work. It, it won't work. I, what I, if you had an evil twin, like what? an evil twin brother that that ripped, that like came in and then like took all your money? Okay, now I'm looking at exactly it. Like I'm looking you. at it without. No, it won't open up with my eyes closed. But when I open up my eyes, so if I'm asleep, it won't be able to do it. Yeah, I, I don't remember which programs uh, have it. In I think which, it recognizes I, your I, eyes. I have a, no, I have a funny feeling that it doesn't recognize your eyes, and I'll tell you why. I can have dark glasses on, and it still sees me okay. I can put my hand over my eyes, and it will still recognize me. You get what I'm hmm. saying? So, wow. uh, yeah. so what happens if somebody, while you're sleeping, puts their hand over your eyes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Come on. Let's, you know, uh, yeah. I'm, you know what's nice about this? If, let's say, God forbid, I drop dead tomorrow, uh, Marjorie can open my phone by coming to the casket and holding it over. <laughs> Point well taken. Huh? Point well taken. So it's, it's, Peel back your eyes. I didn't think you were getting a casket uh, if you did that first. Well, I, 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 I was using casket in the service of a joke, okay? So does that mean that the ashes work with the facial recognition? Listen, I had a friend of mine, died at 39, Paul, who ran a company called Play Incorporated. And he died at 39, heart attack. Let that be a lesson to you, Phil. Widowmaker. Uh, it was the widowmaker of all time. Uh, yeah. And he left a good-looking widow behind, by the way. Uh, anyway, uh, he, yeah. I'll get to you in a second, uh, Patrick. Uh, he, uh, we, he was always on his cell phone. And these were the days when he still had, I think, like the Motorola flip phone. So what did they do? What did they bury? What did they do they, when they went to the viewing? His friends took his cell phone and put it under him. So when hmm. he was buried, he was buried with his cell phone. And as they were lowering the casket, somebody dialed it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was a great way to send him off. Yes, uh, F- Patrick and then Jack. I was going to ask, um, I, when you die, and I, I assume you're going to get cremated whether you want to or not, um, are there gonna, is there going to be a headstone for you? Is you going to bury the ashes? Well, I still have to put up a headstone for my mother's grave. That's the point. <laughs> You haven't done it for that. I still, so I you know, every, about once every year I go through a great guilt complex that there's this empty space next to my father without a stone. Yeah, same here, Alex. I have, my mom's been dead for over 30 years, and I haven't gotten around to it. Really? Once and, and, you, and once a year you get the guilt pangs, right? Yeah. You know, where my father's Why don't we go in on one stone, stone together, chop it in half, and I can put half on my mother's, and you can put the other half on yours. Hey, hey. In the area of the graveyard that my father is buried, that area doesn't allow stones. It has plaques that are on the ground, like a glass. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you could have one of those. Uh, uh, when I went, when I went to uh, uh, the cemetery where Wyatt Earp is buried, in yeah. in Colma, California, uh, if if you ever read the history of his life, he had a wife, and she was she's buried right next to him, and they're just two plaques. And then on the White other, Earp is in coma? Yes. Oh on the other I side and that her other boyfriend or something. Uh, on there. the other side uh-huh. is a is a, is a, is of her is another person buried, and we think it was somebody she either married. I read the book on her, I think she got married again. And so no, she, she was dating him. She oh, she was dating him, but the, the, he's buried next to her. So it's kind of like a it's a weird deal. But no, Racial. uh you didn't know that uh, Wyatt Earp was buried near you? No. Yeah. He, uh, Where is he? Where is he? Holy Cross? Uh, no, he. I can't remember the name of the funeral. Is he Jewish? Was he Jewish? Holy Cross is. Uh, no, but his wife was, I think. Holy Cross, Batman. 
Yeah. But, but, yeah, that's half a coma right but, there. But why is this big bush cemetery in coma? But, but you, you know who who spoke at all my uh, You know who spoke at Wyatt Earp's, Earp's funeral was was Tom Mix. Well, uh, he uh, it, 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 what happened in his later years as Earp went out to to Southern California and Hollywood and hung out with movie stars and became a consultant to uh, Western movies. And the thing was that when you see all those old Western movies, they're the closest you're going to see to the real thing, because it was it, there was there were enough people still alive that were working those pictures that had been part of the old West, so it was authentic. What you saw later on, as years went on, was less and less authentic because those guys weren't alive. But he was, in fact, Bat Masterson. You know where Bat Masterson wound up? Uh, the Bat Cave. No. New York City, as a sports reporter for the New York Herald. New York City. Yeah, <laughs> he became a sports reporter in New York City. So, you know. How did Jim Morrison end up in Paris? Uh, it had to be a woman. <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, I think he was. I think part of the reason why Jim Morrison was in Paris was because he found it romantic because of the poets and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, he's buried in, I think he's buried in the same cemetery as maybe Bertolt Brecht. I'm not sure. Uh, Paris is the most beautiful ci uh, city in the world. No, it's not. Wyatt, Wyatt Earp is at Hills You've of You've never been to a lot of other cities in the world. Yes, ba I Based have. on what? It's, it's a very uh, nice romantic... Uh, it's a walking city, the beauty of the buildings. Hey, the, uh, I'll, uh, uh, you know something? I'll hold San Francisco up against Paris anytime. It's It's not the same. San I know, Francisco. but I'm trying to say to you is you can't say that's the best, most beautiful city in the whole well, world. Uh, hey, I got to tell you, you, you ever been to Zermatt, Switzerland? Yeah, yes, I <laughs> have, on a Matterhorn. Yeah, but I have. It's beautiful, but it's not a city, city like Paris. Well, you know, have, you been, I, 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 have you been to Barcelona? Yes, I have. Well, do you Bar aren't going to say Barcelona is as 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 wonderful as Paris? Barcelona is different. You know, you've got the La Familia, you've got all of the influence of Gaudi, but Paris, you 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 know, you, you look at the uh, the different bridges like the Pont 19 and the uh, what, what's the big? And it's not the called the La Familia. It's the Familia of uh, uh, Alexander. What? And Pont Alexander, which is that bridge that goes. From the uh, 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 like Rue George V over to the Presidential Palace. Now, now he's and, giving us a travelogue and showing us how well traveled he is. Yeah, well, you asked. But what I want to know is what did Phil mean when he says San Francisco wasn't a city like oh, a city? What I said was San Francisco has got some problems. There are conventions that aren't coming here anymore because of all the. Filth uh, no, and no, 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 now I'm talking, I'm not talking, listen, Paris, when I was in Paris once, it was so fucking filthy because it was a garbage strike, okay? You could, the smell in the air was that of pure and utter oh, garbage. This, this is All the right? way oh, San Francisco is becoming. No, it has nothing to do with what it's becoming. It's what it is. It's the it's the architecture. It's the hills. It's the topography. It, it's, it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful, city. gorgeous city. Come on, it's just a couple of Victorians. I mean, you can go to Boston. You can go to you can go to a Oregon. A couple of Victorians. I can I can show you I can show you ten square twenty square miles of nothing but Victorians in San Francisco. Oh, uh, the reason I say that, uh, Jack, is because it burned down in 1906. And so it's, it this is like that fight in a Woody Allen film between uh, this kid's mother and his father about which which ocean was the best ocean. Well, if you want to see a city that yeah. is uh, squeaky clean. Uh, Come, Zurich. You've been, to, you've been to Dallas, and Dallas is a horrible city. Absolute horrible yeah, city. Yeah. Uh, uh, Patrick's got his hand up, and then uh, Ray. I, I know uh, Jeff, because uh, uh, he was in Milwaukee for some time. It ain't a pretty yes. city. It's not anywhere near what the worst city that you're going to talk about could be. It's probably better than Detroit, but there's nothing really significant in Milwaukee, so... I don't have any opinion on that well, shit. Well, I mean, we, we, 
we could probably come up with the ugly cities, but I'm not saying Paris is the most beautiful city in the world. I think it's a beautiful, very beautiful city. But, you know. Um, you know, I, when you look at the architecture, when, you know, why did Hitler not destroy Paris? Because it was, it was so beautiful. What do you mean? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. He tried to burn down Paris, but the, uh, the uh, uh, general in charge of Paris oh, wouldn't they do it. Surrendered. They surrendered so it wouldn't be destroyed. Right. Yeah, the Vichy government. So don't tell me that he didn't want to destroy uh, Paris. He wanted to burn it to the ground. He looted it, you know, looted it for the art. And, uh, you know, uh, you know when, you, when you you walk down the streets of Paris, it, it's just, it's, it's gorgeous. You know, the, uh, there isn't another city that duplicates that large I of think, a city. I think Barcelona is magnificent. Barcelona is is nice, but it, it it has areas. I mean, you know, when you look at Paris. And by the way, yeah. Barcelona so, yeah. used to be a hellhole when yeah. when Franco has areas. When, well, yeah, when but Franco uh, when Franco listen to me like listen to me way. when Franco hated the uh, the Basques, <clears throat> uh, he let that town just get dismally horrible. And after he died, and when the Olympics came, they turned that city around, and it became just gorgeous. I mean, the, the Barcelona I visited under Franco was an entirely different city that I saw when I went back for the Olympics. The, and for me, it was mostly one man's uh, uh, influence, and that was Gaudi. No, there were a lot of different. Uh, Kirk Gaudi, yeah. Not uh, Kirk. <laughs> actually, oddly <laughs> enough, oddly enough, you've heard the term, you, you know, brutal. that architecture is gaudy. That's really where the term comes from, is Gaudy actually is how the name is pronounced. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll get that uh, uh, that La Familia, and, and that's been under construction for well, what, five Sagria, years. Sagria Familia. Uh, yeah, well, it, 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 he did the front. He did the back part. Never finished the front part. Now they fin they're finishing the front part. But as an inspiration, they used him as the inspiration for it. Uh, so, question is, is it going to be? Um, it, the fr I don't like the front as much as I like the back. The back is just You have beautiful. to look all the little things that are buried in the front. You know, you, you, you when you look at these holes and then there's stuff in there, uh, and then there's stuff in that. Well, I, I, I look, I, 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 people don't even know what the fuck we're talking about. So look up the Sagria family, uh, family of Sagria, or whatever it's called. And uh, and and uh, you know, Gaudi Park, Gaudi Park is another yeah. park. Uh, is park I, I park Gael. Park Gael. G R U. I just pronounced it, but you weren't listening to me. Park Gael. Oh, Gael. Yeah, yeah. That's how it's pronounced. Okay. There's apartment buildings there that he designed that are just a, a, a phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they uh, they all they all look like skeletons. It's amazing. Uh, hey, listen, Rob, so good to hear from you again. Glad to know you're, you know, you kept awake through it. So, yeah, you know, we we appreciate it. And uh, whenever you can call us, we'd lo love to hear from you. As always, you're a great addition to any citizen panel. And we want to, when you get some time, hear your voice again on some new spots, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I, I just took, I just did the 10th, uh, 9th and 10th iterations of the uh, the uh, the what do you call it the lineup promo, which I added new stuff in the lineup promo. So uh, there's new uh, shows. No, no, the new new promos. I took your voice and put in. Oh, just you, the, you, I inserted the different actualities. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the different actualities. Anyway, hey, listen, Phil, thank you. Jeff, thank you. Patrick, thank you. Ray, thank you. Rob, thank you. Kevin, thank you. Also, a big thanks to uh, uh, Jack Bishop, who also joined us. Why don't you all wave goodbye, okay? And we'll hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. See you later. That's our Citizens Panel, ladies and gentlemen. That's how they, how they roll. Coming up next, uh, Jack Bishop and the Intersection. Uh, he will be here uh, until 1 o'clock in the morning, at which time it is then uh, the uh, Connections program coming out of Miami. Uh, and, uh, not Miami, out of Florida. Well, it's not out of Miami. And uh, that'll be at the midnight. We'll see you again next Tuesday, uh, uh, right after Damien with the exchange. He's on at uh, 9.30 at 10. We'll be right back here, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
tell her I love her, okay? Bye.